hit it. Meet me at the intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith, fun, and family meets. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection. Woo! Welcome to Sundays at the Intersection. We're delighted to be spending this time with you. We're going to be talking about the book of Exodus. So take a look and enjoy. What's on the menu? Hello, Grumpy Gus. <laughs> why are you so, such a, why are you so grumpy? I see you're eating uh, cookie, cookie dough. dough. You must really be sad. It makes me feel better when I'm sad. Well, you know what? I know what we can do. Let's get, let's call Noisy Girl. She always makes you happy. No, she's the problem. Oh, what should Noisy Girl do? She's forgotten me. She, she never comes in anymore. That doesn't sound right. What do you mean she doesn't come in anymore? She doesn't where come is she? in. She doesn't come in the house. Where, do, where is she now? Out oh. there. Oh, in your little screen and porch? Yep, on the back deck. Yeah, cats do that all the time. Do they, Not she noisy. Do, she does it constantly now. She never comes in. Are you sure you're not exaggerating? No, I'm not exaggerating. Let me show you some pictures. All right, prove it. Okay, I will. Oh. What do you want? Okay, well, clearly you weren't exaggerating. No, I told you. Yeah, Noisy Girl really does like to be out there a lot. But you know what? I guarantee you that uh, Noisy Girl's an old lady cat. And as soon as it gets The cold, vet called it a senior. She's a senior. <laughs> She's a senior cat. <laughs> That's what I said. Well, senior kitty cat is going to come in here once it gets cold outside. But, I, you know... I understand. Mm -hmm. I hope. Feeling like someone doesn't even think of you anymore and for, feels like they've forgotten you is super painful. And I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it does make me sad. Yeah. Well, you know what, though? It reminds me of what we're going to talk about today and some other people who felt forgotten. So let's talk about the Israelites. The main course. Today we're beginning our series on the book of Exodus. Such a great book. So many things happen. We're very excited about talking mm -hmm. about this. We're going to be talking about it for four weeks because it's a long book. 40 chapters. Yeah. Well, a lot happened. A lot so. happened. It, a lot happened. <laughs> it should it. be that long of a book, yeah. So it's the second book in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're going to focus only on the first 11 chapters of it. So, by the way, Exodus means... Mass departure. Mass departure which, I like it. Yep. Spoiler they alert. They get away. <laughs> they depart. <laughs> they do. So anyway, Lisa's going to start kind of at the beginning of Exodus, and we're just going to work our way through these 11 chapters together. Take That's away. absolutely what we're going to do. So where we're actually going to start, you think we're going to say Moses. We're not. Not we're yet. We're say, getting there. We're getting there. We're going to start with Joseph, because mm. Joseph was the last really powerful Israelite before this book was written. Okay, and if you remember Joseph, oh, remember the musical? Yes. Uh, uh, Joseph, and Joseph, Joseph, you know what they say. Go, 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 go. Okay. Anyway, Joseph in a Technicolor dream coat. He, he was sold by his brothers. Anyway, he became second or third in command, very close to the Pharaoh, literally saved Israelites from starvation when there was a famine going on. And they had this great relationship with the Pharaohs. Well, after Joseph passed away and then that Pharaoh passed away, the next Pharaohs weren't as keen on the Israelites and didn't like them as much. And they were concerned that there were so many of them. And so they mm -hmm. kept taking away their power more and more and more and more. So here we are hundreds of years later and the Israelites are enslaved and they've been enslaved for a long time. Okay. So they're not even free anymore, and they're doing backbreaking work. Making they're being bricks. treated yes. really bad. Yes, like, and building the, the cities, you know, in Egypt. It's it's really really bad, and that's when you, I'm assuming that you know some of the story of Moses with but the, that's when Moses the baskets comes in the Nile the comes on. But we're gonna actually jump right through that. And Exodus, the book, goes through so fast. We're still only at the end of of chapter two. End of chapter two. 
Moses is grown. He knows who he is. He knows that he has a brother and sister, Aaron and Miriam, you know, who are Israelites. And his heart is now going out to the Israelites. He sees how badly they're being treated, loses control, does something really bad, and is so ashamed that he runs away. Hmm. He's hoping that God and the Israelites just forget about him. Hmm. And that the Pharaoh forgets about him. And then maybe he won't be punished for what he did. And at the same time, in that chapter, after Moses has run away, it's, I think it's chapter 2, verses like 23 to 24, it talks about the Israelites groaning because they thought God had forgotten them. Hmm. And this is not the kind of groaning, groaning because of the backbreaking work. This is the groaning that comes from broken hearts and broken spirits. And mentally you're broken and spiritually they're broken. And they literally just felt crying out, crying they're out. Crying they out they, that, they didn't even matter anymore. Similar to how Christy kind of feels treated. I'm sorry. It's not funny. By noisy girl. I can't believe I just, well, because I just like compared slavery to noisy girl treating you badly. I'm so, and the idea you know, is that she, uh, I feel forgotten by her. Just like the idea yeah. was that Israelites had felt and forgotten by you feel God. Taken yeah. You feel yes, taken advantage yes, of. And yeah. Yes. And she, you know, for you all to know, she's an indoor-outdoor cat. She used to spend a lot of time indoors with us. Mm -hmm. Now we don't see her at all. She stays on the deck all the time. She's she has never... what she needs, doesn't need them. She doesn't need us. Well, she'll need us. She'll come in and eat. Oh, okay. And then okay. she immediately wants to go back outside. So she, you know, at least she used to kind of love on us a little, sometimes yeah. maybe give sort of. Give and take of. a little bit. Now no give and take. I'll oh, take. Take, take, take. Take, take. I'll take. take That's take. all she does. Kind of like how the Egyptians were take, take, taking advantage of the oh Israelites. <laughs> I brought that right around. Because <laughs> you know we're talking about noisy. So here we are. It's only the second chapter, and we're talking and hearing about the Israelites groaning, and they feel like God has forgotten them. And meanwhile, Moses is hoping that God forgets about them. Mm. Or forgets, forgets about, about him. him. Yeah. Not, not about the Israelites. No. Sorry. But God tells yeah. Moses, no, you're the one I want. That's right. He is the chosen one. Because doesn't it make sense? And how wonderful is it how Moses' weird background he might be the only one who could have done that job for God because he knew the Pharaoh's family and he knew how Egyptians worked and he spoke that language and Hebrew too. It was amazing. And so God convinced him, hey, you feel underqualified, but I'm God. I am who I am. I am the Almighty. I created you. I will give you the words to come out of your mouth. I will give you the signs. And so we think of Exodus, the first 10 chapters of all these amazing things, and then the weird stuff like the plagues happen with the frogs and the dark and the hail and all that stuff. Focus. But I want you to remember, we want you to remember this, as this was a time when God certainly did not forget mm -hmm. the Israelites. And not only did he want them to know that in a small way, but he wanted them to know in an emphatic way, like with a exclamation point, that he was not only with them, but he would fight for them. Oh, yeah. Certainly not forgotten. And that's a different theme that we hadn't really thought about before, and we hope that it's new for you. But what a great testament of God's love for these people demonstrated in a beautiful way. Yes, just like his love for you. He will not ever forget you either. He won't. So thanks, Lisa. You bet. Now you guys know a little bit more about Exodus. Exodus. Dessert. Yum.
hit it. Meet me at the intersection. It's time to make a great connection. Faith, fun, and family meet. So come on in and take a seat at Sundays at the intersection. Woo!